This is the new Origin 300i. And even if you were never in the old one, you'll appreciate this one. The old 300 was an early concept for Star Citizen, and the designers worked very hard to incorporate cargo space, a bed, and a sweet modern flight deck. There was nothing wrong with the 300 series, except it might as well have been made by Drake or Consolidated Outland. Five years ago, the guys at Origin Jumpworks hadn't nailed down their style, and it took the eye store of ships, the 600i, to figure that out, and the 300 series is back, setting a new standard for Origin feel in what is certainly the run-up to the eagerly anticipated 890 jump. To begin with, the same architect who lost his ruler when the 600 was done is back. The garage look at the 300 has been replaced with organic curves we know to be Origin. The strange boxiness that was the attempt to make a functional interior is gone, and back are the thoughtful grace we expect of anything with the Swirling Universe logo. Realizing that no mid-level executive wants to fly across the system with their cargo in sight, the new 300 features a cargo bay underneath the cabin accessed via a dropping floor. The result was a massively larger cabin, space for a kitchenette and bathroom, both things the original 300 lacked. It wasn't that the old slide-out bed was a bad idea, this one slides too, but now you get a real mattress and instead of a folding piece of plastic, and who doesn't love the feel of 900 count sheets in the morning? You even get a wine and weapons rack. Never mind the breathtaking views from the pilot seat, let's talk about that glass canopy. Stunning as it is, around it is the most important evolution from Origin to date. The 600 series had something missing. It was luxurious, spacious, comfortable, sure, but only a Steve Jobs disciple would have called the materials top of the line. Everything was artificial and sterile. The 300 series was treated to more pinewood accents, and new blue accent lighting which brings life to the interior. You can be sure the 600 will get the same love when they redo her as well. Outside the ship, things have improved even more, if that was even possible. The old 300 had weapons, lights, and well, whatever else mounted to it like it was some sort of a jeep. Now stylish cutouts in the bodywork and premium light technology sportly grace the hull, and high-end engineering now appears to have been involved in the support of the wing that itself mimics the overall shape of a 600 now, where before, well, the body of the 300 probably saw a wind tunnel, the wing appeared more of an afterthought crafted from spare sheet metal. Odds are, if you're flying in Origin Jumpworks anything, looks are all that matter, but don't let that fool you, the 300 is one hell of a flyer. To begin with, she's quick to accelerate. No doubt the M50 engine technology is finding home in other Origin projects. Even in space, the space brake works well with massive forward-facing reverse thrusters. With better visibility than half the light fighters in the verse, dogfighting is more than doable. The weapon suite is a touch light, but the soon-to-be-released 325A, a designated light fighter variant, will certainly make up for that. To be perfectly honest, the 300 series for me is probably the best ship to really get started in the verse with. It has 8 SU of cargo, making it on par with the Avenger. Snappy flight characteristics, especially in atmosphere. No problems doing bounties, and it looks amazing. If the 325A has the same amazing interior, there will be little argument from me or anyone else to that throne. The 300i is slightly more expensive than an Avenger though, and the 325A even more so. But as long as the Avenger has a 2D radar plot, those extra few dollars are simply getting you materials you'll enjoy looking at while traveling from Daymar to Art Corp to deliver that package. Previously, I had written the 300 off for use as a cheap light fighter and an all-around early workhorse. It had a quirky nature to it with a door near the back, and what five years ago were cool features are now pretty commonplace. Now this ship is a real daily driver, and it has turned a lot of heads, and you can be sure that most self-respecting fleet owners will have at least one 300 series in the hangar, so you probably should too.